Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Pretend Problems. I'm Kelsey Cook. And I'm Chad Daniels. It's uh, Animal Planet Week <laughs> here on Pretend Problems. It's, there's a lot of things going on right now, but yeah. uh, it is good to be home. Yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll understand why he said that, because the second we hit record, all three of our pets need to uh, be on our person. So yep. if you hear purring or like a stray snore, it's... <laughs> It is a snore pets. could be me. <laughs> yeah, uh, truly. <laughs> after I'm after very, Thanksgiving, very tired. I've uh, been eating like how you say dog shit <laughs> yeah, you for do. one full week. <laughs> um, last night it was we were playing cards. My mom was here, and we were playing cards at like eleven thirty. Yeah. And I just I made a promise to myself that I was going to start eating better mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh shit, there's ice cream that I just bought. So I went in and just housed a pint of ice cream at 11 30 p.m did you i'm not looking into the camera because i'm ashamed of myself <laughs> did you do that after i went to bed no you were sitting right next to me oh oh that okay yeah sure <laughs> after you went to bed then we have a problem well i feel like you said that you've done something like that before with me not with you way in my past I'd, oh yeah, okay i'd get up make sure everybody was look around everybody sleeping okay and then just <laughs> chow <laughs> down yeah Cookie Monster. Yep. Absolutely. Well, it's the holidays. I feel like it's just, it's a different time. It's okay to to let her rip. A lot of rip. Yeah. I mean, if you're giving me the okay, fuck, I'll do it. Yeah. I just don't want, uh, um, my friend Ran and I, we always call it bend and bands, which is yeah. like when you gain enough weight to where your underwear <laughs> band flips over. <laughs> yeah. Because of the weight from above. Yeah. Uh, that's... That's a struggle. So I don't want to be bending any bands this holiday season. But yeah, I'll, I'll mess it up a little bit. Yeah. If you think there isn't a cat strategically placed in front of my stomach for this episode, oh. then... How about this pillow <laughs> yeah. that was made for me? Little chatty, little chatty snacks. Yeah. We've done a little a little YouTube magic to cover <laughs> cover our decisions the past week. I'm dressed like a ninja. I'm dressed like I'm about to go egg houses. <laughs> yeah. A little black everywhere. Uh huh. That's right. Kind of slim it out. Yeah. As we record this, it's it's the end of Thanksgiving week in real time. But this episode is going to come out at the end of December. Yeah. Because uh, so it'll yeah. still be the same old shit happening. Oh yeah, for sure. Probably you, worse. You can count on the fact that the day this comes out, I will have housed a pint of ice cream the night before. <laughs> yeah. So we are right on track with telling the truth here. I love it. We're kind of bad with enabling each other with food sometimes i think most of the time we're pretty good but if either of us get that that wild hair up our ass for some sugar yeah. it just takes one glance at the other in the grocery store and we're like do, right. do you want pie do i want pie and then we get we don't even have to say anything it's yeah. just like a look and then all of a sudden we come back with half the ingredients <laughs> yeah. which is pretty ridiculous i'd like you to try that with exercise for me if you could you look at me like you want to exercise i'd be like come back with half the ingredients like where's your ingredients as you have your <laughs> workout outfit on i'm like fuck you have five cases of Oreos. misinterpreted your look <laughs> yeah uh so like we said this will come out december 20th chad and i both have tons of tour dates for uh for 2024 god that sounds so futuristic i know can't believe that's the year that's coming up um i'm gonna be in san diego in january and also i think i will be doing a show in la as of while we're recording this we haven't confirmed it but Keep an eye on my on my Instagram and on my website for an LA date, and then in February I'm in Tacoma, Philly, Red Bank, New Jersey, Stamford, Connecticut. In March I'm in San Francisco, Rosemont, Chicago, and Minneapolis, and then I'm taping my special in Madison in April on April 6th at a Comedy on State. So tons more tour dates. You can get everything at KelseyCook.com. How about you? Uh, well, I'm going to be on my way to Mars because it's 2024. <laughs> uh, no, I'm going to be in uh, Tempe. I'm just going to read the dates, not when they are. You guys figure it out. I'm a little bit like the Riddler. Go to chaddaniels.com. Tempe and Tampa. Now listen, I've said it before. I'll say it again. Tempe's spelled with E's. Tampa's spelled with A's. Be careful because one time I got yelled at because a guy was, uh, I can't remember the exact thing, but he bought tickets for one of them and then had to go the other one. It was ridiculous. Oklahoma City, (laughs) Key West, Houston, Addison, St. Paul. I will tell you this. March 2nd, I'm going to be at the Fitzgerald Theater. And I'm going to be uh, filming a special right in the old hometown of the Twin Cities, St. Paul. So uh, Kansas City, Omaha, Brooklyn, Boston, Milwaukee, Nashville, Cincinnati, and Austin, Texas. Yes. 
Yeah, also, Chad's special is on YouTube, you guys. That's true. Mixed Reviews came out November 22nd, and uh, um, people are liking it. So please, go watch it if you haven't yet, or watch it again. Or you know what? I don't even care. When you go to work, start it on your laptop at home and let it play. Yeah. I don't give a shit. You hear me? Yeah. I'm fighting this algorithm. We're, we're let's Look at me. We are in a war with robots. <laughs> And if we're going to win, we need to start cheating. <laughs> so please, just please have it on yeah. your phone, your TV, and your laptop at the same time. I don't care. Yeah, we need I'm to throw sand. By animals here. We need to play dirty. It's time. How come you got the fun one? How come you got the good one? Oh, you mean, why did I bring the two good pets into this relationship? The That's two cats? Oh. Um, I don't see us having to shout, shut the fuck up to the cats. Yeah, we cut that part, but there was some <laughs> screaming at the dog when he was barking for, guess what? No reason. Oh, did a leaf blow by the window? <laughs> what are you going to do when it comes in here, by the way? Here's what this bitch does. He barks and barks and barks like he's going to scare someone. And as soon as someone opens the door, he gives them the belly. He humps them. He would last two seconds in the wild. Yeah. A little tiny sparrow would peck his belly open. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Lay down, you son of a gun. <laughs> so yeah, please go watch Chad's special. It's so good. It's nice of you. I'm Thank so you. proud of you. Thank you. I made history, recorded two different hours in one night. It's never been done. That's right. Because that's crazy. That's, that's true. I mean, blows my mind that Next you... Next time I'm doing three different hours <laughs> in an afternoon at a... At a Chili's, which, by the way, I just saw the... Uh, at a Chili's. Here's what sucks. When you see somebody that you loved so much growing up yeah. in a dipshit commercial, oh. like I just saw Boys to Men doing the, you got, I got my baby back, baby back, baby, those that commercial. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, guys, please. Yeah. What happened to your Jet Black Benz? What happened to plenty of friends? What happened to all the Philly steaks you could eat? <laughs> now you're at Chili's? <laughs> For some goddamn baby back ribs? Oh, I guess we have come to the end of the road. I got a bunch of these. I didn't even write this down beforehand. This feels good. I like this. This feels good. Yeah, Chili's actually is one of the uh, small handful of times in my life I've had violent food poisoning, which we will also circle back to later this episode. Oh, that's my, right. My recent food poisoning. But yeah, I either got it from Chili's or from Mrs. Fields in Northtown Mall in Spokane from expired milk. We don't know. My friend and I went ham. Well, then night. we're going to say allegedly on both of those. Sure, we're allegedly. We're not going to blame either one of them. Okay. We're going to say that you got it that day. Mm -hmm. And anyways, um, you did just have some, which we will circle back to. But yeah. uh, just to let you know how our life is going, we both can spell diarrhea no problem. <laughs> We don't need autocorrect. We don't need to look it up. We just know it by heart. We were in a green well, actually, I'm sorry. We know it by shart. <laughs> which is true. <laughs> we were in a green room a few days ago for a show. And a, another comic was talking about diarrhea randomly. And he's like, oh, man, that word. How do you spell it? And I just whipped my head around. D-I-A-R-R-H-E-A. In yeah. record time, I have that on lock. I have typed it so many times. Absolutely. To so many people asking why I went to the hospital this past week. And, if, uh, you want, if you don't know how to sound like a redneck and you need to for like a school play yeah. or something like that, look at the word diarrhea and say it exactly how it's spelled. Diarrhea! <laughs> and that'll get you right into Redneck City. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, it was, whew, been a dark month. Feels like a good time to talk about it right in the holiday season. We'll get I into think some... so. You think you're having troubles? Yeah. Yeah. Have enough you shit of, your pants yet? Enough of the Hallmark commercials. Yeah. We'll have a real episode today and talk about some darkness. And and if you're also going through a dark time, maybe it'll make you feel better. Uh, my grandmother, speaking of this stuff. Speaking of diarrhea. She used to, well, kind of. <laughs> she used to make these cookies, molasses cookies that were so goddamn good. And I've made mm. them a couple times. But here's the thing. They're made with Crisco, which is yeah. just fat. It's for the olds. It Crisco is not good for you. I'm just going to tell you that. Yeah. And so we would, my cousin and I, John, we would just like scarf these things down with milk or eggnog 
which is also Oof. it's like made from egg yolks. Asking for it. And so um, a lot of times you'd go to the bathroom, wouldn't even know it. You knew you had, you'd sit down and it was just like greased lightning <laughs> because of the Crisco and the egg yolks. And then... Um, it's like an ice luge. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I made these cookies for the first time in, I'm going to say 12 years. Mm-hmm. And I sent them to all my family members and I ate them again like I was a little kid because I think it brought me right back there. Yeah. And then I was working... Um, this, I ate them during Christmas and I was working New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I just don't like, I feel so like I'm sweating. And I did this with my fingernail <gasps> and there was like white. It no. could have been Crisco. I might've been sweating Crisco. It might've been coming oh up my pores because my... I did this with my <gasps> fingernail and there was uh, white goo underneath. And by the way, <clears throat> I had not just been the pivot <clears throat> man in a circle jerk. It was <laughs> legit coming out of my pores. And this is back when you weren't doing any skincare, no creams, I'm assuming. Correct. I like to go to bed. I like to go to bed. I like, I like nature to do its work. Sure. And that's why I look 45 years older <laughs> than I am. Like, I'm just going to go to bed like this and see how it goes. You've been very blessed with, and I mean this in a good way, with oily skin because it does you. help your skin stay younger because it Thank keeps you. it moisturized. Thank you so much. And I mean, God, apparently also Crisco. Yeah, Crisco. And I think six months in the team. frozen tundra a year helps too, because you kind of just go, everything just freezes up for a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. That would I think I could see both sides on that. You're also drying the fuck out of your face, which is like, that's not great. It just seems so aggressive. Well, yeah, listen, <laughs> I washed my face today and looked like my whole face was going to crumble off because it's oh. just all this dry skin now. But. That's what you think. Sleep well. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Ew. let's talk you about, uh, you want to talk about your trip? Yeah. Let's, w- we also want to talk about a Vikings game that we attended. Um, but we should, maybe let's end with that. Okay. We'll just get right into sure. what happened because we're, we're already talking about it. So I, if you're eating, stop, stop it right now. Stop eating. Stop eating. So let me preface this by saying it, it's not been a great health month for me mentally and physically. Right. Um, had a few weekends on tour back to back to back, which is just, it's hard on your body. It's hard on your mind. You're, you're flying all over. You're in different hotel rooms. You're not sleeping great. Uh, you're eating in like a survival way. You're just trying to find food where you can. It's just, it's, it's not easy. And so I, for the first time in my life, got on antidepressants Thought I would give that a try because I was feeling I was going through some stuff. Yep. Um, we well, you are going through some stuff in your real life. I mean, yes. Yeah. We haven't talked to, I don't know if we've ever talked about it on the show yet. Probably not. But um, my mom has frontotemporal dementia. Um, and it's just, it's the worst. It's super hard. I'm very close with her. And, you know, you just go from your life being, you know, I felt like my life was pretty fine. I wasn't thinking about death much. Mm. And then when, one of your parents is going through a terminal disease. It's like, you, it's hard to not have your brain go to dark places. Of course. So, so anyway, dealing with some hard stuff, decided to try antidepressants for the first time in my life. Uh, and that made me feel way worse. <laughs> for... I'm not laughing at that. It's no, just, it's... it is not the greatest commercial. It's no, I've got my baby back, baby back, baby. It's none of that. <laughs> It, this is not a great commercial for antidepressants. Now, I will say that when yes. I when I was going through my divorce, I I had them just for a tiny bit, mm-hmm. but mine was situational, right? I right. knew the outcome. I just needed a little push in the right direction. Right. And then also I was told not to drink on them, and I stopped drinking, and that was probably what really did it. What really helped. Because I didn't drink for eight months and just made sure I was getting everything in, in order right. after that. And so... Um, so antidepressants can be very, very helpful. They yes. just were not in this situation. Yes. I, I say this as somebody who I always encourage people to get help. That's why it was kind of ironic that I I had such a hard time just like accepting help in that way and right. sort of like taking a prescription medicine because um, I've just been so self-helpy my whole life. Yeah. And there are certain things where it's just like, hey – journaling's not going to do it for <laughs> right. going on a walk might not be 
enough. And uh, I, I had tried Wellbutrin, and for some people, it can be too stimulating, and then it can make you feel worse. It can give you like panic attacks and increased anxiety. For a lot of people, it is a game changer. So yes, right. if you are feeling like you want to try antidepressants, it is just one of those things that's like it's not one size fits all. You might have to try a few different ones. But anyway, I tried Wellbutrin. Didn't work for me. Oh, poor Chad just getting some rough phone calls on the road. Just like sobbing uncontrollably, not wanting to leave my hotel bed. It was tough. And then... Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it didn't sound fun. It didn't sound like you were in a, a fun place. Yeah, I wasn't having the time of my life. Yeah. And then it's like you have to go on stage and not just like do your job but like really make people laugh there's no going through the motions really in comedy like you can but it looks like yeah i mean then you phone it in and everybody knows you're phoning it in but then you also have the can may i yeah you also have these fuckos that are recording (laughs) you when you go on stage and it's like that's not what you're here for be a grown-up put your fucking phone down and watch the show you're acting like a a 12-year-old at a Willie Nelson concert <laughs> trying to get footage that you were around when Willie was. It's like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Just put just enjoy the show. You're there for live entertainment. Yeah, that it was like a really rough streak of road weekends lately where I just happened to have some people in the audience every show who just would disregard the club's pre-show announcement, which is like Put your phones away. There's no video recording or photography oh, I, allowed. I, may I, may yeah. I? Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming out to the <laughs> Chuckle Hut. We got a great live show for you. Kelsey Goose is in the bag. Let her hear it. That's not enough. For some reason, it's never enough. It's never enough. Yeah. No, as, as a crowd, it's never enough your first try for some reason. Yeah. And you're in the back going, that's enough. Yeah. I just, as long as they just are listening, it's enough. Don't <laughs> scold them right out of the gate. And then it's like, a, there will be absolutely no tolerance for taking pictures or video footage of the comedians. And now I'd like you to uh, keep your table talk to a minimum, but your laughter to a maximum. <laughs> yes. That's been since the 80s, that phrase is around. And then it's like, uh, now uh, p- put your hands together for your host. Uh, we don't know. Put your hands together. And then they like send yeah. the host up and it's just, it's, it's wild. And then, and then everyone has their phones out already. They're like, they're not going to do anything. Yeah. It's that voice recording that they play at the beginning, whether it's pre-recorded or somebody in the DJ booth doing it. It's a very like substitute teacher vibe. People immediately are like, we don't respect this. Right. Like we we're not going to listen to this. And so then it becomes up to you as the comic to police it if security isn't doing anything or paying attention. So it's just like it's just not a good vibe. Yeah, And it's like you're doing a new bit. Right. And then you obviously don't want that recorded because yeah. you're working on it. It's not done yet. And then eventually you hope it makes it into your next hour that people can see in a special. And, and then. So you're almost to the punchline and you see some dirtbag with their phone out and you're like, well, fuck, hey, can you put your phone away, please? Which yeah. is not part of the joke. Maybe we should start writing jokes <laughs> where part of the joke is, can you please put your phone away? <laughs> yeah. It does just like like ad markers in a podcast. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I have had to like stop jokes several times lately and ask people to put their phones away because even if it's not a new bit you don't want any of your footage online unless it's part of your special because you want people to come to a show and have them see it for the first time. Right. You don't want some shaky video recorded from a fan. And I think sometimes people confuse going to a concert right. and going to a comedy show. Yeah. Because if you get on TikTok, it's like a billion videos of TikTok. Right. Of, Everybody of, knows that song anyways. Oh, that, right, right, right. That you're putting out. Yeah, a billion videos of Taylor Swift concerts, of their, you know, their experience at it. But with comedians, it's so different. Like, yeah. you don't want your punchlines to be already heard by the time people get there. Right. And what's even worse is when you get people that go, well, I wasn't going to put it online. Well, then what the fuck were you going to do with it, you <laughs> creep? What are you doing yeah. with this video footage? And let me tell you something. And this is specific to you and I, right? Yeah. I can't stand... When 
people are doing that because I try to record you at home and then you come home and you're already sick of it. So I follow you around and I'm like, oh, let me get that. Uh Uh-oh. It's really taking away from Chad's, you know. I mean, I want the videos. It's it's creepful. I'm the one that splits the house payment. I get the fucking videos. Okay? Chad has first dibs always. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's just been... um, it's been not great sometimes lately, unfortunately. Some crowds have been amazing, and then some it's just like... And here's what also sucks. Sorry to interrupt you. No, it's okay. But it also sucks when there are those people in the crowd, right? Mm-hmm. And they're not representative of the entire crowd, but you still have to stop the joke. So the people that are there having fun, yeah. that are there to see you, that are there with their phones down, right. are having to sit through you policing the audience. Right. And then they're kind of like, well, what, what's going on? Yeah, exactly. Right. Like I, I had a um, very bad show, Chicago uh, improv late show on Friday. Mm-hmm. And then I found out people had driven there mm. from Rockford, Illinois. And it's like, this is not a representation of my show. Yeah. It's just like people are talking. They're wasted. Oh, my God. Yeah. People's phones going off. Yeah. It, it's it's hard. It's There's such a wide range of how comedy clubs are run unfortunately and some of them are run so well and it makes your show go so smoothly right and then other times it's like you are up there having to play all the roles you have you have to be the comedian you have to be the security guard you have to be the manager it's like right it can be exhausting and sometimes all the phones go off at once and it's like we'll find the kid <laughs> after i'm done okay everybody knows you have 48 hours I'm only doing one hour. So even if it happens at the beginning, we're still going to have 47 more hours to find this child. Put your fucking phones away, please. And what are you going to do from inside a comedy club? You're not going to see a gray sedan. Get out of here. Put your phones down. Anyways, I'm freaking out. I'm sorry. I need some food. My stomach hurts. I'm used to to 15,000 calories a day. Yeah, and I've only had a smoothie today, so I'm like Ooh. really Jones. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I can see it in your eyes. You're like, <laughs> uh, wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> so it's been hard on the road, and then I had a run of shows. Oh, funny to use the word run, oh, but to yeah. get into a lot of runs. So I had a Nashville show, a Huntsville, Alabama show, and then was supposed to have two nights in Atlanta. And I got to Huntsville. I did my show. I had tacos in Huntsville. Uh Um, Everybody knows that Alabama is known for their Mexican cuisine. And so I was like, when in Rome, let's for sure eat tacos here. Uh And so I also thought it would be wise to do a mix and match taco order where I I had like every kind of taco at this restaurant. And then I went to bed and I woke up at six in the morning with really, really intense stomach pain, ran to the bathroom, had... um, what I believe the medical term is the fronts and backs. Yeah. Now this is in Huntsville, Alabama, where yes. NASA is located. Yeah. And so um, a few scientists woke up wondering why they didn't hear the countdown <laughs> before takeoff. Just. <laughs> I believe well, I believe the phrase we're looking for is Houston, we have a problem. I can't believe you weren't in the room because that was so accurate, actually. Yeah, thank you. And the fronts and backs. I had the fronts oh and backs my God. <laughs> on the toilet, garbage can in hand, fighting for my life. Yeah, and that's brutal. Yeah, mm. and that went on for three hours, and then I started to pass out, uh, which is what your body does when you don't have any more fluid in you. Yeah. So, this, um, yeah. Well, the good news is this story. A lot less people are going to be recording you at shows. <laughs> That's my hope. Please. <laughs> I'm not who you think. I we, mean, we used to call that a hot box. Oh. <clears throat> when yeah. you were shitting and puking. Interesting. Yeah. Call it the hot box. And then, uh, so, so you are completely out of, you are so dehydrated. Mm-hmm. Um, and you start, to, everything starts to close in. Yeah, start doing that full flop sweat where I can just feel every single pore on my body has sweat. Yes. Droplets coming out of it. Jesus. Everything goes completely white, uh, like debilitating body cramps. And I'm just like on the toilet holding on to the bathroom counter so I don't fall over. 
because I'm like about to lose consciousness. Yeah. And if you, if you would have, to, if you tell people in Alabama, everything went completely white, they'll be like, oh, fucking finally. <laughs> but uh, that's not true. That's not fair. That's not fair to Alabama. There are some fine, fine people there. <laughs> oh, fuck. That was very funny. So I start to pass out. I kind of come back to again, stand up, start to pass out again. So I make it over to my phone. I call my friend Tommy, who's my opener on tour. He's staying down the hall. Um, I tell him what's going on. He calls the front desk. They call paramedics. Paramedics come. Jeepers. I am like barely, I feel like I'm barely alive. They do my vitals. My blood pressure was pretty low at that point. And so they were like, we should, you should go to the hospital. So they took me in an ambulance to the hospital. On the way there, the one of the paramedics was like, is there any chance that you could be pregnant? And I was like, well, my boyfriend has an IUD. I'm sorry. I don't have an IUD. <laughs> my boyfriend's had a vasectomy. <laughs> my boyfriend's had a vasectomy. God, I fucking wish you could have an IUD. If I, you don't think I would have made you do that, you're crazy. Uh, just so you know, I did what I needed to do. I don't know why I'm getting dumped on here. It's like, I'm I'm done. That's true. That's I, true. You know. That's true. Champion, actually, you know what? Champion of the people. That's that's a good point. You're You're so right. You actually really did do it. Mm-hmm. So I was like, my boyfriend's had a vasectomy. I've had an IUD. If I am pregnant, it is like our Lord 2.0. Like I've got the sequel to our Lord yeah. in my in my body. If you ever see Kelsey on a piece of toast, you'll be able to sell it for a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm not pregnant. And then we got to the hospital and the nurse there was like, all right, so you know, we're just trying to figure out what it could be. So, you know, if you had some food last night, did you have um, chicken or pork or fish? And I was like, yes. And she was <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, that's my girl. <laughs> and she was yes. Like, all. Yeah. And she was like, what do you mean? I was like, I had mixed and match tacos. I had all, I had every kind of meat that that they had in the restaurant she's like oh you know just kind of looking at me like um, and that was unwise but I'm like well and so that ruled out nothing basically to tell her what I had for dinner and then they took my blood to try and test and see if they could figure figure out more and then a different nurse comes in and starts asking me very generic questions like date of birth email address home address just basic things and then all of a sudden she goes And do you have a living will? (laughs) (laughs) And I just like my heart stopped. And I looked at her and I was like, do you ask everybody that? Or do you know something I don't? (laughs) Because they had, I mean, I felt like at that point, they probably would have gotten my blood test back. And I just didn't know if like that was their bedside manner of like, okay, like this girl is like about to die and we just need to know. You either need a uh, living will or all your stuff's going to go to the government. You choose. <laughs> but do you have also, can I tell you something? Yeah. Uh, there's nothing more terrifying, and I don't mean this to be shitty, but there's nothing more terrifying than having somebody go, hi, hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. I'm in charge of saving your life. <laughs> I don't want someone to sound like that. Yeah. that I want someone to serve me waffles. Yeah. At the Waffle House. Like, hi, sweetheart. Do you want chocolate chips on your waffles or no? That's what I want. Yeah. I don't want somebody coming in like, listen, I, you got the runs and I got a cork. Let's figure it out. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. Yeah, they had the, one of the nurses was like in training, like she was shadowing the other nurse. Yeah. She's the one who put my IV in and she like kept missing. And then it fell out. I'm like laying there. I can feel the fluid and my blood leaking down my arm. I'm like, hello, like, I think it's out. Just fucking nightmare. Yeah, that is brutal. Because when you go in Huntsville, Alabama, by the way, the the PhDs in that city are outrageous. They are, the number is so high. Because of NASA. Because of NASA. But here's the thing. You go to the NASA museum and you go look at the lunar module Mm -hmm. and there are a bunch of people around and you go, hey, how does this work? And no one goes, well, let me tell you a little something about that. They immediately are like, uh, I can tell you exactly how that works because I built it. And you're like, right. what the fuck? Yeah. It's incredible. And again, not shitting on the Southern accent, but it is terrifying in that 
particular situation. Oh, yeah. When I got to the hospital, they have me on the stretcher. As soon as I go through the hospital doors, there's a security guy. He's like, hey, darling, we got to wand you down. Make sure you don't have any weapons on you. And I was like, wow, I am in fucking Alabama (laughs) right now. Like, I mean, immediately getting wanded in case I came in with a gun. And I mean, I, I, I... Maybe that's a great thing. Maybe that's what every hospital... Maybe every hospital does do that. But it just felt like a very Alabama thing that the second I walk in the door... For them, that's like probably a pretty big concern that people have guns on them when they I would love if you just looked them right in the eyes and went, double dare cavity search. (laughs) I've been hotboxing, bitch. I dare you to open that Pandora's box. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So it was just, it was a tough day. I was in the hospital for like seven hours. They gave me fluids. They gave me meds. They couldn't determine if it was either really bad food poisoning or stomach flu. But um, I flew home the next day. We had to cancel the Atlanta shows. Also, I will say this. It's so fucking crazy that while I was in the hospital, I turned the, turned to Tommy and I was like, I know I look like shit right now, but you have to take a picture of me because I have to post something online that's like actual proof that I'm in the hospital and that that's why I'm canceling these shows because it's so weird. Like if you start to get more followers and people are buying a ticket to see you, I think sometimes for, for people forget that you are still a human who can get sure. sick and people will get pissed if something gets canceled and they'll be like, yeah. oh, if this is bullshit, like they just didn't want to go to work or whatever. Like you have to prove to the public that you are actually hooked up to an IV in a hospital yeah, and that's it, why you can't be there. It's a bummer. I, I can understand people's excitement, right? right? If they see you... And your tickets go on sale six months in it before the show, yeah. and they get them like that day, right. and they're just like got like they print them out and they're on the fridge. And every time they go to the fridge, you're like, "Fuck yeah, Kelsey yeah. Cook in Atlanta! It can't wait!" And then, so I get that part of the excitement, but when you know, to to be like, "I can't believe you're doing this to us," I got a babysitter, and you're like, "Well, I got the next pandemic." Like yeah. in my body. I'm patient zero. Yeah. So I can't come. Yeah. It's it's tough. And again, I feel like the things we've talked about this episode where it's, you know, potential people leaving shitty comments about you having to cancel shows or people po- pulling their phone out at shows. These are like 1%. It's, yeah, it's, such, just, a it's small, the minority. Yeah. such a small percent of people. Generally speaking, our fans are so wonderful. Yes. It just is a bummer that like, because one percent can be really horrible you have to like take action to cover that one percent you know what i mean it's it's tough right and then a shout out to all the people that left get well soon yes my god because that was it's it's interesting when you do comedy, right, you start comedy, you're like, I'm a clown and I'm going to go tell these dumb stories and I hope people at least enjoy one part of it. And then you do it for so long where where you meet people after shows and you yeah. um, message sometimes on whatever. And then they're just they're just so nice. You get sick yeah. and they're just like, is, it, is there anything I can do? Can I, you know, yeah. can I Venmo you $40 to buy you a pizza? It's like, well, I mean, always yes, but, <laughs> but but it's just, it's interesting to, to have that happen where you just go, holy shit. And then you scroll down and then there's one, you know, like red face emoji with the F word bleeped out over the mouth. Uh-huh. And it's like, I've had these tickets for, you know, whatever. And it's like, well, I've been vomiting and shitting yeah want to switch simultaneously want to switch yeah simultaneously yeah seven hours yeah three hours whatever it was yeah so yeah those of you who left me sweet comments just know that did really mean so much to me i mean i I couldn't believe it such an outpouring of love so that that was really nice thank you guys for for all of that, that did genuinely make me feel better. <laughs> I looked at your comment that said "toughen up" and then deleted Ugh. it because I was like, "Well, I don't know how this will go." Did you actually? Are you just no. fucking with me? No, God. <laughs> I was getting. Um, Tommy was nice enough to keep me abreast of the situation the mm-hmm. whole time, and I was just like, "Man, oh man!" Because I also had shows, and I was in yeah. Southern California, so you know, I'm just sitting there going like, nah, "Okay." 
<laughs> well, go ahead and text me when you're still alive or don't when you're not. <laughs> That's a tough situation. Yeah. Tell me showed me a text that you sent him because you had sent him uh i'm sorry he had sent you a picture of me in the hospital and you wrote back like oh this fucking kills me Mm -hmm. or something like that and that you were having a hard time with it and that made me feel nice that you were upset i was very upset not like i would think anything else but just you know it's it's hard to be alone i mean i had tommy but like you know generally not right. you're not in your home you're in Al- i've never even performed in alabama before now i'm in a hospital there it's like it's a tough experience and with all the shitting i did on the southern accents shout out to the people that got her out of the hospital and yes and did everything yeah thank now you. i'd like to say a, sh- a non-shout out is that a thing what do we say what's that a fuck you sure okay can we talk about the vikings game yeah okay <laughs> we both have a friend mm-hmm. named Sai. yeah and uh, he has a podcast. Well, he's my, the co-host on Middle of Somewhere, which is my other podcast. Right. But he has another podcast. So many podcasts. Yeah. He has another one for the Minnesota Vikings. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, we had a deal where I helped him um, get some guests because the idea behind this is he interviews comedians or celebrities that are fans of the team that the Vikings are playing that week. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. So then the Vikings were like, well, let's get him some tickets, right? And so we have also another friend, David Huntsberger, Mm -hmm. brilliant comedian, who is a 49ers fan. And we were playing the 49ers Monday night football, and we're like, let's do this shit. So the three of us went, met Cy at the stadium. We had on-field access, Mm -hmm. beautiful seats where the Vikings come out. We could have, I mean, like flicked a penny and it it could have hit one of the Vikings. It, it was, was crazy. crazy. <gasps> hmm. Jinx. Yomi. Well, let's not go there. <laughs> so we have these great seats. Yeah. We go check them out before the game. Then we go on the field. We're watching the practice, watching how fast these athletes, these are elite athletes, all this stuff. And then we go back to the seats. And as we're getting closer, we're like, oh, no. All those men have their shirts off in yeah. an indoor stadium. And they're standing and we can already hear them from quite a distance. Yeah. And so fucking sure enough, we get there and we are right in front of these. And I'm going to say bitches. <laughs> it was unbelievable. I'm putting out if if you have the a friend that has the other half of this story, you know, like the little heart necklaces that you put them together and they match. If your friend was one of these people and he was like, yeah, these fucking Vikings fans, you, Let's get them in touch with us. Mm-hmm. Love to see them again in a dark alley. <laughs> so <clears throat> the, it's it's nonstop, right? There's what they're wasted. They've been drinking since eight a.m. Listen, I don't have a problem with being wasted. I've been wasted. Yeah. Right. But I'm not constantly. You got to get turnt, bro. You got to get turnt. Stand up. Anyone that was sitting down in their group got yelled at and ridiculed for sitting down. And it's whistling and nonsense. And I know it's a football game. I don't want to seem like Mr. Old Curmudgeon. No. But, but it was fucking wild. And then we looked around to all the other sections. And everyone else was just like having so much fun. But not cocksuckers. Just being normal. Just be behaving normally at a football game which is you're excited you're cheering you're Sc- chanting screaming, screaming is great you can scream but this group of guys it was like pictured the worst guys in a nightclub at like two in the morning those guys who are just yeah. like non-stop yelling belligerent sloppy let's think of guys at a nightclub that buy bottle service to attract women and attract none, and now they're released out into the wild of Las Vegas at night. Yes, it's, exactly. It's, it's them. It's them. Yeah. So they were pretty much insufferable from right. the second we got there. Right. Um, I would say the loudest guy was right behind me. Yeah, I would say that too, because he was the guy yelling at everybody he would call them by their last name if they sat down. Mm-hmm. You know, he'd be like, uh, "You know, Johnson, well, you got to get turned, bro. You got to stand up, bro. It was yeah. everything, bro. 
So for me, I will tell you, I fucking hate repetition and you know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I woke up once, (laughs) I was taking a nap, my children were watching Disney and there was a dog that could talk and he was chasing his tail and he said, my tail, my tail, my tail, my tail, my tail, about 150 (laughs) times and that's the closest I've ever come to throwing a television out a window. (laughs) So for these guys to be behind us going, you got to get turnt, bro. You got to stand up, bro. You got to get turnt, bro. I mean, I could just do this all night. And it's like, yeah, change the fucking topic. <laughs> change what you're saying. Know one thing about your football team besides the name of them. And I don't mean individual names, by the way. It's right. 40, the 49ers. It was so fucking wild. And then one of them was a Vikings fan. Yeah. Sitting. He was one row. He was in our row sitting right next to Dave. And he was such a bitch, like would go this close to your face to talk to you about something and you could feel like spittle on your face. Yes. It was so brutal. And, and, and you don't want to, you know, you go, these guys are having fun. They're at a game, but still. Do you think they were coked up too? I have no idea. I don't know if it could have just been alcohol. I mean, it was, you guys, it was like. Well, so speaking of alcohol, there was some alcohol wasted when some got. Yeah. Spilled on your pantalones. Yeah. So the guy behind me, who I'm going to say was the loudest of the group, at one point is so drunk, he just drops his phone in front of me. He's just like dropping shit. Right. Just one of those people. I bend down, get his phone for him, hand it back. Then, Which little- was super nice because my first inclination was to kick it forward one more row. Yeah. And you, like, oh, you were already down there with your hand. And so I thought, well, I don't want to kick her hand. But I was definitely going to slide it one more row and be like, bummer, dude. Wow. Would you really have? Oh, absolutely. I was, al- mm-hmm. I was already mad before the rest of this happened. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, I'm not a violent human being. I mean, I was, but I was so mad. And then I go, I can- well, go ahead. Okay. I'll let you I'll let you tell this and then I'll tell this other part. Okay. So then a little bit of time goes by and that same guy spills his beer on my pants. We're not talking a huge amount, but enough for me to like feel it immediately and be annoyed because then you're just like, okay, well now I have to, to like do I have to yeah. like sit in this the rest of the game. Right. I'm gonna have to do laundry when I get home. You're just like get your shit together. Just be an adult. They were so rowdy and bad. It felt like we were getting punked, honestly. Like, I felt like they had been sent on a mission to be like, be the worst people you can be and terrorize the people in front of you. And then some guy from a Christian group was going to come over and be like, we can't believe you guys handled this so well. Here's a thousand dollars to do with what you want. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. it it was. We were getting so tested. So he spills beer on me and I'm just kind of sitting there stewing. And then just a few minutes after that. The guy leans, he just like is drunk. He loses control of his body and he just like clobbers my head with his arms. And this isn't like a small guy, just like bangs the top of my head with his arms. And then he goes, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. And I, I can't even look at him because I'm like on the verge of tears. I'm so angry. And I just give a, like an arm motion back, like a, like a get the fuck away from me, like get back, whatever. I don't want to hear it. I tell Chad, Chad, you didn't see it, Correct. right? And then I, but I told you just so you could know, like, this is why I'm mad right now. I, I can't remember if, I, if you had noticed that I was. I did. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You looked furious and I was <laughs> like, well, this could be about me, but I don't know why. So I'm going to ask this question. No. So I, I told you what had happened and you were like, do you want me to do something about it? Which... Yep, go ahead. Which I'm glad you asked. I feel like that's a great partner thing is like, do you want me to say something? Do you want me to stand up for you? What can I do? I am the least confrontational person I've ever met. Sometimes to a fault where there are times where like I maybe should. (laughs) Do you want to say something? Well, I do kind of want to say something because it is so hard to sit there with you being upset Mm -hmm. and me knowing that I could easily just turn around at, at the very least mm-hmm. talk to them. Yep. And now I have to sit here and it feels like um, 
It feels like getting your wings clipped a little bit. Yeah. So then I have to sit there. I'm like, well, she's pissed. I can't do anything about it. It made me feel very helpless. Yeah. I felt like that group of guys was a lose-lose situation because I think in a lot of situations, having a conversation with them like you wanted to could have changed something. But with them, they were so far gone. I felt like it either was going to make no difference or it was going to be exactly what they were hoping for, which was for a fight. And so, which is exactly what happened. So then another couple minutes goes by. The guy does the exact same thing to me again. (laughs) I'm laughing to not get mad. Yeah. So just, you know, I know it's leans, leans forward, just slams down on my head with his forearms. And I have never done this in my entire life. I shocked myself. As soon as it happened, I was on my feet, turned around and in his face before my brain even knew (laughs) what was happening. So let's revisit this. I don't get to do anything. The one that maybe could. (laughs) And then old fucking nicey over here. Old 5'4 bird bones. Turns around and wants to throw down with a grown up, a grown man. (laughs) I didn't want to throw down, but I just... I was. Eating. You said the F word. I know did that. Did I? Oh, yeah, you sure did because it startled <laughs> me and made my dick twitch. It was weird because I was scared and horny. And I don't know that I've ever been that before. <laughs> I don't remember what I said. I think I said that's the third fucking time you've spilled your beer on me. You've hit me in the head twice. Like, fuck it like stop or like get your shit together or whatever yes. like i don't remember exactly no i'm it was going to use just a very low volume here okay but th- so this guy then right he no he goes i'm so drunk he hands his beer to his friend he goes i'm done drinking i'm just gonna sit here mm-hmm. and i go because you had gotten, you had stood up at that point too once you saw that I right. stood up. Because then I get to come. Yeah. As long as you then start once it. the floodgates then were open, I get then they to were open. Yeah. And so um, I am, I probably would have gotten dominated, but I love a good fight. So I was kind of in there just kind of wondering like, who's going to swing? Because this would be fun. Now I will tell you. Um, Do you love a good fight? You just started the well, didn't start the podcast, but you were saying like you're not a violent person. I'm not like, a violent you person, like fought, but I haven't fought in so long. But it's like, I don't know. I mean, there is something as long as you don't get anything broken when you get hit. There is something that really wakes you up. It's like, I'm sorry, am I in my twenties again? What's <laughs> happening? So, um, do you think that's every guy, or do you think that's like? Um, I don't know. If it's, no, I don't think like, it's Minnesota for sure. I think it's just like how, how you're built or whatever, or how you grew up maybe. Yeah. But anyways, so I was excited to turn around because I thought when you got up, then I get to get up and that's fine. So then this guy's like, I'm going to stop. I tell him, I go there, you have this seat, this, your ticket gives you the right to that seat up until here. Do not fucking cross this line again yeah. or we're going to have a problem. And then that is when Rico fucking Suave (laughs) with his sunglasses on indoors, his Uh. fake gold chains, his fake championship ring. They're all shirtless, by the way. Wasn't even alive for. They're all shirtless. And he has a tattoo that says faith across the thing. The T is like starting to peel off because it's fake. (laughs) I don't know if that's true, but everything else was fake, including his machismo. And then he goes, it was a mistake, bro. It was an accident, bro. And I go, no, accidents don't happen three times. I go, I go, you know, he's now he's done it three times. So that takes it off the accident list. Yeah. And he goes, "Uh, what are we going to do something about it? And I go, I don't think you want to do that. Yeah. And then I just stared at him for a little bit. And then it was interesting because then the, the guy behind you goes, I'm so sorry it was an accident. I go, I understand that. I'm not mad at you, but now your boy's being a bitch. Mm -hmm. And I think when you use bitch um, to someone who has faith tattooed on their chest, (laughs) it is an insult. That's what I was hoping for. I was hoping it would be considered an insult. 
because uh, he would have been fun. So not to like be a weirdo, but I actually, before this had happened, I looked over the railing because we are one row from the railing. Mm-hmm. And I looked down to see how far it was and if someone got thrown over the railing, if they would like be impaled or if they would snap over another railing, nothing there but turf. So I thought, this is my chance to get on ESPN. (laughs) Because I had already marked his belt buckle as my handle to just fucking flip him over. I mean, he was, I'm telling you sober, I bet you he would have probably killed me in three seconds. But he was so drunk. He was so (laughs) incredibly drunk. I'm like, well, I can do this. This is like tossing a sack of potatoes. So (laughs) when... When you said earlier that I was like, yeah, no, I don't want you to do anything. This is why. Because he had already Jason Bourne his strategy in his mind of what he would have done. Well, there's five of them. There's three of us. So you got to get rid of one of them. And that's got to go over the railing. (laughs) But anyway, so at the end of this all, there were three soccer players Mm -hmm. that were to the right of us. One was from, I believe, Belgium. Mm-hmm. The other one was from the Netherlands. Is that the same place? Am I thinking of the same place? Is Belgium they're they're peaceful people. Yeah, they were like, well, Flergen, Gergen, Bergen, if you want our Flergen seats, you can Flergen have them. And so we were like, yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah. So we traded seats with these guys. And they were so amazing. Such nice guys. Yeah. And it was their first NFL football game. <laughs> and we just kept going, this is not how it normally is. Yeah. Look around. There is not these, there aren't these assholes everywhere. It's just right here for some fucking reason. It was yeah. right here. And then the guy with the faith tattoo, I kept seeing out of, out of my peripheral. He kept like leaning forward and waving his hand to get my attention. And I was just like st- staring forward, just thinking like, oh, if you get in a fight, you probably go to jail and then have to sell your house because Kelsey won't want to be your girlfriend anymore. And just, oh my God, please. One more person put your hands on her head so she gets mad again just one more (laughs) like waiting for you to get involved yeah that was that was a lot for me I've never done anything like that it was awesome to watch because (laughs) now I know it's in there and now I know that I can do just about anything but hit you on top of the head twice in a row (laughs) Because then you're going to get the fucking horns. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And then I was, it was so embarrassing because like as soon as I yelled at him, it turned into immediate like crying. Like then I'm just like sitting there with like tears streaming down my face, like trying to choke him back. I know that everybody's looking at us. I just, I just hate any, anything like that. I don't want to talk to anybody else. I don't want any confrontation. I don't want any problems ever. But it, you do get to a certain point where you're like, well, what are you going to let this stranger keep hitting you in the head over and over? Like right. at a certain point, well, you're you, not you even respecting yourself. Right. Like you have to take care of yourself. But man. Um, so anyways, here's some homework for you guys. Uh, just wondering if your girlfriend's sitting there crying because a man hurt her. What would you do? <laughs> I'd like to get all your fucking messages on that because I know what I do and it involves a railing and going over it. Anyways. <laughs> <sighs> but that would have stressed me out more. And I think I, 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 see, I can't. I, I know that. Right. And also, I do know that if I would have acted in a violent way, not only would it have stressed you out, I think it would have scared you. Yeah. I don't want to see that. Yeah. I want, you're perfect. I thought you handled it perfectly because I know that I am safe with you. And also that if we are around other people, you can keep me safe. Like but I it feel also very... didn't feel perfect. I just want you to know that. I bet every single guy watching, if the, if you're watching coupled up or whatever, mm-hmm. you're looking at your partner right now going, if that ever happens to you, I will fucking kill them. And that's exactly how I felt. Yeah. But I just, I don't know. She, <laughs> she said, no, I guess I've become a listener. When did that happen? This sucks. Yeah, I didn't want it to escalate. I didn't want you to get hurt. I didn't want them to get hurt i'm not looking for anybody to be physically hurt right i just wanted wanted it it to stop i just wanted it to stop but yeah that would have stressed me out for it to become anything more than that so you you respected my wishes exactly your wishes are stupid (laughs) um now that i've given them a question to think about should we take some questions ourselves yeah so 
like we've said the past few episodes, please write into pretendproblemspodcast at gmail.com. Do it. With your, with your questions yeah. for how, how we can help you in your relationship. If you want dating advice, anything related to that stuff. We and are happy. we're not experts, so take we're it with a grain experts. of salt. But if you're going through something and you want our advice, we, we're happy to take a crack at it. Yeah. Oh, I love trying to help others. <laughs> if if I if it's a choice between helping myself or helping someone else, I would much rather put helping myself on a shelf. Yeah. What? <sighs> oh shit. Eminem, I'm coming for you, dude. <laughs> oh, God. So because this is a an episode that we are recording before the show actually premieres. The show is premiering in three days, uh, as we record this. Yeah. We're so excited. We hope That's that you exciting. Yeah, we hope you've been loving the first three episodes. But because we haven't been able to actually get emails in yet as we record this, we are doing a few more questions that we just we found online. We yeah. found that are like common relationship right. issues or, or questions. So we're gonna tackle a few of them and then we'll wrap it up. Let's do it. Um so one that you had found was can you have a romantic relationship without physical intimacy? What do you think? I mean, I think if someone is terminally ill, Mm -hmm. we talked about that. I have a friend whose father got very sick and, um, you know, his dad and his mom loved each other, loved each other unconditionally Mm -hmm. until uh, he passed Mm -hmm. um, with no intimacy because he physically was unable. Right. Um, So I think it's possible in that situation. I think if two people are healthy, so, you know, I, I... and they work in progress. Mm-hmm. I think that when, uh, if I were in a relationship where there was not physical intimacy, I think I would wonder why. Mm-hmm. I would think I would wonder, well, if you're not getting it from me, where mm-hmm. are you getting it? Mm-hmm. And I would, uh, you know, probably pinch my tits a lot more and be like, oh God, is this why? <laughs> so um, I think it would be hard for me because I always, as you know, mm-hmm. when there is a problem, when when you shift your attitude or your mood or your tone or anything, and I know you have a thousand things going on, yeah. but I still always make myself the problem. Right. So I always, my first inclination is to go, oh, fuck, what did I do? Oh, she doesn't want to have sex with me. Did I gain weight? Mm. Is she getting it somewhere else? Um, do I stink? I mean, like any ridiculous mm. thing. Yeah. And so... I think you can have a relationship. I think for me, it would be very hard. Yeah. Because uh, of how I, how I deal with stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <clears throat> there's so many people in the world, you know, people who are completely asexual. So yeah. obviously in those situations, it's like, there are some couples where that is just not even, I think, on their radar as much. Right. And I do think that that's a conversation that's worth having both early on in the relationship, but I think especially after that honeymoon period has worn off a little bit, because I think most couples tend to have more sex early on. You're in that like almost vacation mode, especially uh, if you are doing long distance the way that Chad and I did. It was like we would see each other for maybe three to five days once a month or something. So then you feel like you have to maximize that time yeah stings when you shower (laughs) down to my last epidermal layer Uh, as always family please don't listen to this uh (laughs) but you know sometimes it's like depending on your relationship situation you are having your physical intimacy frequency be different Mm -hmm. than like what it is for the long haul and once you and i lived together and kind of got into more of a like this is how often we are away for work and all that I feel like we've had those conversations of like what is your ideal amount of times a week right that I mean we you, you don't have sex. to get it all in in a 36 hour period right right you don't, you don't have to break records right anymore I mean still try but <laughs> um yeah so I, I think that um my advice for this if anyone's like me 
I would definitely, you started taking antidepressants we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, your mom has dementia. Mm -hmm. You uh, were on the road. You got sick. You have all, you, so busy on the road. Your career is taking off like on a rocket ship. Yeah, and you. so when, if there's times where we go a couple days without, mm -hmm. I have to first try to remember all that other stuff and yeah. not, and not put it on me. Yeah. And so if you are, if you handle things like I do, that's what I would do first. I would take a deep breath and I would look at what could it be besides you? Cause I'm gonna tell you something. Once you take it on personally, once you think it's your fault, you're going to start acting differently. You're going to start, uh, at least I do, your brain is going to start finding all these little tiny things that fit the narrative that you've come up with that it's your fault. And then your brain is going to trick you into thinking that's right and fucking, anyways, best of luck to you. <laughs> yeah, the confirmation bias. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're not someone that is comfortable bringing up that topic, um, even though maybe in a relationship that is something you should be comfortable doing, but that's, um, if you're not, you can always order um, uh, refrigerator magnets with the letters on Amazon and you can spell out why aren't we fucking on the refrigerator. <laughs> something to think about. This is the sort of advice you can expect from Chad when you write into pretendproblemspodcast at gmail.com. I think that's great advice. <laughs> uh, okay, we have a couple more things. Um, when you are living with somebody and you are feeling like maybe household chores are falling more on one person than the other. How do you navigate that? Do we have a system? Stuff like that. I think the person, the partner that makes the most amount of money shouldn't have to do anything. Oh my God. Well, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Well, <laughs> enjoy the fence falling down because I can't fix it. <laughs> I'm I'm completely kidding. I think it should be, um, you know, if 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 there's one person that can do things physically and the other person can't, obviously that should mm -hmm. fall on the person that can do them. Yeah. And then I think I I would hope then that the partner would notice that and appreciate that, and then kind of take hold of some things that they can do physically, which I think we do a good job of. Yeah, I really appreciate how much you love making this house great and those sort of kind of like stereotypical masculine things like I fucking love that I love that you like going to Home Depot I love that you love fixing shit it's just that I feel very taken care of because I don't like to do any of that but I think we it shows <clears throat> I think we know <laughs> what our strengths and weaknesses right. are or our likes and dislikes in household chores and also uh Brene Brown had said this and it d went everywhere where she's like relationships are never 50 50 that's the biggest crock of shit that we've ever been told she and her husband go into I don't know if it's they go into each day or if it's just like a stressful time and they're like hey I'm I'm running at like 30 percent right now and then the other partner hopefully can be like all right no problem like I can spend I can spot you the other 70% today. I can like right. help extra. Right. So I feel like it's always in flux. It's never like you're never going to be able to make it completely 50-50 in a house. Right. But you, you hope that when all is said and done, it the dust settles, that it is around yeah. 50%. Because yeah. sometimes people will, um, will do all the household chores – because they're having a bad day, right? Yeah. And they just, they put in headphones and they do all that stuff to keep their mind off of whatever is bothering them. And then you hope, even though the your partner didn't do any of the household chores because you did all of them, you hope that then they can be there for you, mm -hmm. whether it's just holding a hand, comforting, talking about it, whatever it is. I mean, there yeah. are a million ways to make things even. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, we've got one more, and then we're going to wrap it up. Uh, how do you stay connected to your partner during the holidays? Like, we are right in the thick of it right now. We, on the last episode, answered a question about how do you navigate the holidays if your family does not get along with your significant other or vice versa? And this question we wanted to talk about is, like, if 
that is not the problem. If you and your partner get along with your family and they get along with each other, but you're spending a lot of time together on the holidays, how do you still find time to feel like you and your partner are not like just family members? Because sure. I, I struggle with that with you sometimes. We are around your family a lot more often than we're around my family because, you know, we live in Minnesota where your family is um, is based out of. And you and I are pretty affectionate people. Mm -hmm. We're pretty gross a lot of the time around each other. Yep. We're pretty kissy. We're pretty touchy. And so when your family's around, I can start to feel a little bit like we are roommates. Okay. Because obviously we're not going to be making out in front of your daughter. We can change that. <laughs> can we? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I want to. I had that, I had that <laughs> ready and I didn't know you were going to end with daughter. <laughs> I thought you were going to end with mom or sister. And I think that's very funny to do that. But oh, gross. I, I would not want to do that with any of them. Uh, but yeah, I, I have been trying to figure that out. And we had a conversation a couple nights ago about, going into holiday situations where like maybe if the family is staying with you or if you are going to the family's house, being on the same page about like, what do we feel like is an okay amount of time? Because especially if it's not your family, it can be, that can be a lot. Here's my advice for this. It's the holidays. And I think you have to pivot a little bit around the holidays because I think it needs to be like a, uh, you know, when a snake detaches their jaw to get around a, like a hippo or some shit. <laughs> yeah. I think sometimes you have to do that, right? You have to detach the jaw. You have to take everybody in because it's the holidays because you know that eventually the holidays are going to be over and it's going to be back one on one. I think that checking in throughout the day yeah. is a good idea. Like, how's your day going? Is there any way I can help you? You, and and also, if someone needs alone time and just like two hours of quiet because there's family around, saying like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and if the family's like, well, we want you to play games, be like, if it's your family, you go, hey, shut the fuck up. Yeah. You know, then then you have to control your family and be like, she's not, she's not playing games. He's not playing games, whatever. Right. So, um, but I think you do have to pivot a little bit because it's holidays. Now, if you have the f type of family that comes around on a random Wednesday then that's a whole other can of worms. Right. But I do think during the holidays, you just have to say like, it's holidays. That's the time we spend with family. Um, we will get back to normal and let's yeah. check in with each other to make sure that when we have that opportunity to get back to normal, it doesn't take us a week because we're pissed off at each other. Yeah. I think it's like, like you said, trying to be mindful about, even if it's small check-ins, just not letting there be an ocean that comes between you. And so that when family does leave or you leave the family, you're not like, oh, hi, way over there. Like, yeah, feel so far apart from you. Yeah. yeah. And then I think you also have to you have to let the person. So let's just use as an example. Yeah. If we're at your families and I'm like what the fuck is with so-and-so and whatever, I think you need to be able to take that with a grain of salt mm -hmm. because it's not normal for me. Right. And I think that I think that if you're not able to vent to your partner during that stuff, then that is also makes you feel pretty lonely. Yeah. So I think if it's your family that the other person's venting about, I think you need to be able to take that with a grain of salt and just be like, yes, concur. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or, or, yeah, that's how she's always been. You know, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. So. Yeah. I feel like the the theme, which probably will be the theme for so many of the people who write in asking us for advice, is just like, you got to get your communication skills to be as good as they can be. Yep. Because all three things we talked about, physical intimacy, household chores, family around the holidays, it's like you have to be able to have hard conversations right. and, and just and practice checking in when the family's not there. So it doesn't seem so, so weird when they are there, yeah. make, make it seem like a normal thing. And then, you know, obviously don't forget once you get the sex stuff figured out, if your family's there being jerks, you can use the fridge magnets to spell, fuck you, go home. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, happy holidays guys. We hope that you're hanging in there. Do your best. Yeah. Uh, Please 
hit subscribe. I also think on Apple it now says follow for the show. That way when new episodes come out, they will just go right into your feed. You'll have them. It will help the show. So give us a five-star rating and review. Do all the things you can to support our show. Share it with a friend. And uh, see us on tour. That's right. And watch Chad's special mixed reviews on YouTube. Please. Please do that. Yay. All right, guys. We'll talk to you next week. Bye.